you would never build a brick wall like this with all of the stones aligned because it wouldn't be stable. Yet did you know that all regular 3D prints are created in exactly this fashion with the extrusions perfectly aligning which significantly decreases layer adhesion. I tried to fix that and tricked my slicer into printing interlocking parameters to test how this affects the always problematic layer adhesion of 3D prints. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Brilliant, the best way to learn STEM topics in an interactive way. Try it out for free and get 20% off a premium subscription using the link below. Even though 3D printing slicers have come a long way over the years with crazy fast slicing times and features like organic supports, dynamic extrusion width and hundreds of different parameters you can play around with, they still work with the same principle. And this is cutting apart into two-dimensional layers and filling these layers with print moves. And these two-dimensional layers are then simply stacked on top of each other creating a three-dimensional part. The result is one of the biggest problems in extrusion-based 3D printing, which is the significant lower strength perpendicular to the layers compared to in the printing plane. Layers that are stacked on top of each other only partly melt together, creating a weak point. And if these weak points are all in one plane, this is where the part will fail. There have been attempts at real three-dimensional slicing, but basically none of them made it into any mainstream slicer, simply because the approach we use nowadays works remarkably well and is reasonably simple. Even my three-year-old daughter knows that building a wall without overlapping bricks is a bad idea and nobody in their right mind would build a brick wall with all of the stones aligned. Yet all of our 3D prints still produce parts in this suboptimal pattern. So I set myself the goal to change that and try out how we could print in an interlocking brick wall pattern and how that affects print quality and especially strength. Implementing that into the slicing process is in my opinion fairly simple, yet we cannot find this in any slicer at the moment. However, what we need to do is change the printing order. Usually the perimeters are printed at first, from the inside to the outside. And then the rest of the layer is filled with the infill pattern. Since we want to print every other print line shifted by half a layer height, we need to avoid collision of the nozzle with the already printed part. We first want to print every other lower perimeter and then move half a layer up and complete the rest. If we print the whole part like this, we don't have planar layer boundaries anymore, but especially the perimeters interlock in this zigzag pattern. And not only gets us rid of the layer plane, but also increases the surface area where the two layers can bond together, potentially increasing layer adhesion. I did a bit of research, yet couldn't find any patterns on this method. Yet if there are any, please let me know. I'm by the way not the one inventing this, because a handful of viewers have been writing me concerning that method in the past, and there are also Prusa Slicer feature requests. Yet to my knowledge, I was the first one implementing and testing this. And to do that, I brainstormed different ideas. I first thought about using a Python post-processing script that does the reordering until I realized that there's one slicer that I regularly used like years ago for crazy ideas like this. Welcome back Simplify 3D. Simplify 3D was the go-to slicer when I started 3D printing in 2014 because it had custom supports that worked way better than what any other slicer could do. Today, at least if you do hobby level 3D printing, there is barely a reason to spend 200 bucks on a slicer that might be stable and reliable, but doesn't deliver any features that you couldn't find in Cura or Prusa Slicer, which are free. Well, besides their process approach, whereas in Prusa Slicer you can do part specific properties and slightly alter them with modifier geometry, in Simplify 3D you can vary and combine everything on a part from layer height to nozzle temperature. So in order to implement the brick layer slicing approach, I created four individual processes, one for each perimeter and one for the infill. The first two processes are for the internal and external perimeter, and print normally with standard layer height and most importantly an initial layer height of 100%. The super simple yet in my opinion the smart trick to achieve these brick layers is setting the initial layer height for the two remaining processes to 150%. This way these layers are offset by half a layer height in the first layer and therefore are automatically shifted in all subsequent layers. This approach works very well and not only on generic cubes, also more complex parts like a 
3D Banshee look well in the slicer and print similarly well on a real machine. Outer surfaces look way better than I expected and only sloped top surfaces seem to be a bit under extruded. The reason for this is that the slicer misses some of the intermediate layers due to the shift in slicing height. Yet this might simply be fixed by printing layers at half the height once the top of a part is breached. This is nothing I can probably implement in my proof of concept and would be something that needs to be looked at in a proper slicer implementation. I broke some of the parts to get an idea of how much the slicer preview correlates with the real part. Looking at them under a microscope show how the perimeters align when using conventional slicing. The brick layers on the other hand end up with a really nice interlocking pattern where the individual extrusions not only touch at the bottom but also diagonally to the next layer. So far I have only seen that brick layers seem to print well and also look like we imagined under a microscope but we didn't take a look at the most important question. Can we increase the layer adhesion by using this process? So I went ahead and printed layer adhesion samples for that. I tried to design some that had a high enough cross section to fit a bunch of perimeters in order to properly see the effect of brick layers. Unfortunately the design wasn't super straightforward and the first designs often broke at the luck and not at the actual test section. After a couple of design iterations also employing finite element analysis, I landed with this final design. I printed four of these samples, each using the regular slicing method and the brick layers. To see if there are any difference in materials, I printed them from PLA and from PETG. I used a layer height of 0.25mm and four perimeters and no infill to specifically focus on the layer adhesion of perimeters. Once they were printed, I compared the weights to make sure that the only difference is the slicing method. And then mounted them one after the other onto my DIY universal test machine and loaded them at a constant speed until they failed. The PLA samples that were conventionally sliced failed at 944 newtons on average. The PTG samples were just as strong with an average failure load of 950 newtons. The fractured surfaces were mainly completely flat showing the weak point of regular 3D printed parts. Then I tested the samples with the brick layers. The PLA samples failed on average at 1072 newtons, which is 14% stronger than the reference, showing that this novel slicing method really improves layer adhesion. The PTG samples were very interesting. They also increased in strength by 10%. The interesting observation here was that whereas the conventionally sliced PTG samples simply failed in one plane, many of the brick layer samples showed secondary cracks through the part, some almost exploding on the test trick. I'm still not sure if that means that this is a positive result and we got almost homogeneous part properties or if we introduced an additional weakness into the part. If you have an opinion, please let me know. Comparing the crack surfaces showed that we went from a primarily planar failure to a zigzag or even conical failure, which explains the better results because this increases the surface area where the extrusions can bond together. One thing I realized during the implementation of this method was that it probably works the best if the layers are rather tall. The thinner the layer get, the less of an interleaving effect we get. I had planned to investigate that further, but the samples that I printed at 0.2 and 0.3mm layer heights were inconsistent, probably because I used old wet and unreliable filament. The results still showed a slight increase in average layer adhesion with our novel slicing approach, but if we look at the standard deviation, this is probably not statistical significant. I think I was able to show that this novel slicing approach might have significant potential for making functional FDM 3D prints stronger. We probably won't see doubling of the layer strength, but an increase of 10% or more is a lot considering of how good our materials and processes have become in the last few years. I've put my Simplify 3D factory file down in the description and I think there might be ways to do the same thing in Prusa Slicer. If you have thoughts on this approach, please let me know in the comments. And if you have the skill, I highly encourage anyone to replicate and especially improve on this. There are still so many things that can be improved in additive manufacturing with slicing optimization and we need ideas like this to bring the technology forward. I would describe myself as a jack of many trades, but a master of none. Still, having this wide spectrum of knowledge helps me to understand why, for example, our 3D prints often fail 
then question the state-of-the-art slicing methods and finally improve the current approach with my engineering and programming skills. If you like to do similar things but lack the Python skills, struggle with complex maths or need to refresh your knowledge about statistics, look no further than today's video sponsor Brilliant, where you can learn all of this for free in a fun and interactive way. Brilliant is the best way to learn STEM topics with thousands of lessons on anything you're curious about. The reason why I love Brilliant so much is their hands-on approach to learning, where your new knowledge constantly gets tested so you can make sure you understand it and it sticks. Their challenges teach you how to think so you can be sure that you can apply your new knowledge on real-world problems. Brilliant's courses are for students and professionals, from basic to advanced, and I can highly recommend checking them out with a completely 30-day free trial. And the first 200 using the link below gets 20% off Brilliant's premium plan. Learn something new every day with bite-sized lessons that only take a couple of minutes and which you can do anytime and anywhere. Enjoy learning and solve problems you never thought you could by going to brilliant.org slash CNC kitchen. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye.